Hi everyone, it's Emily Francis with Oh My Malta, and today we are talking all things olive oil with the olive oil expert of Malta, Sam Cremona. So the first thing I wanna ask you is about the Maltese olive and the olive oil that Maltese olives produce. Well, let me start from saying that there isn't one Maltese olive. Ancient Maltese olive is very, very special. I press all sorts of olive varieties and Malta has a lot of them. Okay. We have a lot of Italian varieties, which are the most popular probably in Malta, like the Frantoio, like the uh, Carolea, and it produces very nice oil. And uh, we are very proud of it, and uh, I encourage a lot of people to actually grow them, because they are basically trouble-free and uh, resistant and produce copiously. They produce uh, good quantities of olive oil and good quality olive oil. However, I've now been 25 years pressing olives. And the last 20 years was with a particular machine which gives me the opportunity to press reasonable amounts and reasonable quantities. For many years I was alone. And uh, when I started uh, pressing other people's olives, I was encouraging them to bring enough quantities to have their own oil, not to mix uh, different varieties and different sources. People need to learn more about olive oil. It's not just olive oil. I remember, and I remember with very sad uh, memories, that when I was young, we didn't have olive oil on the table. We had edible oil, oil from, from sunflower or from, uh, and, uh, or, and very often mixed olive oils. A blend, a, a taste, a background taste, which was more used to be able to move uh, your digestion. Every olive oil, every variety has its own color, its own taste, its own uh, bitterness or sweetness, its own smell. Smooth is an olive oil which is a fatty olive oil, a pleasant olive oil which stays on the palate. It takes some time to remove. Other olive oils are sharp. They will give you a, a, a bitterness down and they are immediately assimilated into your bloodstream. And this is what makes you crave for more olive oil. This might sound like a silly question, but is there like a table olive oil? Maybe you get it at the grocery store that's a little less uh, strong. A pure olive oil, an extra virgin olive oil, and pure fresh olive oil is not what you find in the commercial stores. You can't, because they would be three times the price, even more. Okay. So to bring that price down and to make it even more attractive and to make it even more used, that you go for these blended olive oils. Of course, they don't say it because once it qualifies by a panel that it is, can be called olive oil because it hasn't got any defects that are easily found um, during, the, during consumption, then it can be called extra virgin olive oil. And these are European rules. So if I, were, if I were to take some nice focaccia bread and dip it into my olive oil, is there a particular variety that I should look for? Well, what you're talking about is the traditional Maltese Hobbs Bizet. Hobbs Bizet is the focaccia, the, 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 the flat bread, okay. open, dulled with, with olive oil, and then and that you can have it because a good olive oil is ready to eat. But in Maltese being voracious and being, you know, uh, golosi in Italian, they say, have lo loving their food. They add the tomato paste, they add the cheese, jbeina, they add the uh, anchovy, and there are so many things that can make this Hobbs Bizet an experience. There are seven main olives here on this island, well, is that right? Could you tell me them just so I can start to look for them? Well, you're not going to find most of them. The one that is most popular, the one that is most unique in Malta, is a variety called Bidini, which comes from Bidnia. These are trees that have been here for hundreds of years, possibly thousands. To the but Roman Empire? These, these go back to, 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 because where they are, we actually found the Roman remains of the uh, trapetum, of the olive oil presses of the time. Now, these trees produce an olive which is small, which is not popular because it is small, makes it difficult to collect, but it produces an oil which is so rich in antioxidants, antibiotic agents, and like oleoporine and oleoxanthal, these, these, these uh, purines, that um, eating them is not enough. I, I, I am the commercial side of a project which is being spearheaded by the University of Malta to produce 
extracts from this olive oil and from the leaf to treat medical problems. One particular variety that we have uh, in Malta and which has is gaining in popularity is what was called the Perla Maltese or the Maltese Pearl. The Maltese Pearl is a white olive. Oh, that's what I was waiting to ask. The Maltese Pearl is a white olive which is rarely found. It's not unique to Malta, it's rarely found. This is what Jamie Oliver came to Malta to meet you specifically to see the white olives and he dubbed it the best olive oil in the world. Well, I know he was impressed. I know he liked it very much. He also gave me a nickname. What was it? The, the godfather of Maltese olive oil. The godfather of Maltese olive oil. That's a beautiful name. Well, uh, it doesn't carry very good connotations. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Being so close to Sicily, you see. OK. Uh, but uh, no, it, it was very gentle. It was very sweet. And um, we we're very glad that he came. And then we have the Sicilian variety, which came here during the days of the nights, possibly before. We have the Moresca, which, which is similar to the Moresca in Sicily, and is very, very strong in itself, and also expressed much later, which, uh, uh, at about December rather than October. And uh, many other. And then, of course, there are the Italian varieties, which are very, and the Spanish, which are in Malta, because they were imported recently, because they were so successful in, in Tuscany, so they're being grown here, thinking we're going to make the same. I think we made something better, actually, because of the conditions that we have here. But that is, for example, the Frantoio, Frantoia. The, the Carolea, the, uh, the Bello de Spagna, which is a big olive, which uh, very, doesn't have much of a taste, or, or, or in the same way these big table olives, uh, which when allowed to ripe in Malta, have again a much very, very fragrant. Sam, let's talk about the process of actually from the trees to the bottle. Well, um, the process is a basic one, although it, it keeps developing over time. Because even as we speak today, there's a process which I am still studying and still hoping that it will go. But what we do at the moment, what is being done all over the Mediterranean, is basically the uh, crushing mm -hmm. of the olive, which is obviously the washing, crushing, and then putting that paste into the bins, which were, were the most important process, is the malaxation, the mixing of this screws, which which, 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 which which turn the paste. They turn them over and over again for a good half an hour, so that the uh, broken, the crushed olive stones are rubbing against the pit, as you would with uh, sandpaper. And this separates the oil from the water inside the olive itself. It used to be done with that big stone that they used to use in rotating in, in, in Roman and in ancient times. As they still do in, in, in North Africa, using a donkey or a camel to take these stones round for hours and hours. Now, this is, of course, much more hygienic and much quicker, and you don't have to smell the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Once the, the malaxation is done, the paste is uh, milled. It passes through the uh, centrifuge, after the milling of this, I mean the olive in, in its entirety with the stone and all, is passed into uh, the uh, into the centrifuge, which separates the oil from the from the rest. Okay. This process also includes the addition of water to make it move. That is the only thing that is still uh, not a problem, but it's the only thing that that takes away from the oil, from the olive, from the paste certain nutrients which go with the, with the mulch, with, with, with what is being uh, thrown away, and that is a pity. But new technology is coming up with pressing the olives and separating the oil without any other additives like water. Okay, now let's go over the final thing I want to ask you, which is the most important thing to me, is as a consumer, what are the things that I need to look for in buying olive oil? What words on the label? Um, what you look for, an, for, a, for uh, in, in an olive oil is make sure you ask or, unless it's given, the producer and where it is made, and ideally, if you know, the variety of the olive that is inside, that is it. There's usually like shops and gatherings where we can buy the olive oil? With the pandemic, I'm afraid groupings have been reduced. So you have to look yourself. But we have a history of, of having these low village uh, uh, gatherings where the local produce is very well exhibited and, and, and available. So Sam Cremona, thank you so much for allowing us in your home and to look at these incredible olives. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I hope that you have many more 
experiences with your Le Me too, thank you.